Parker Brown Mystery Theater. A blend of bronze, bullets, and bewilderment based on the best-selling novels by that slick storytelling sensation, Carter Brown. Our story tonight, Swimsuit Sweetheart, starring Ray Barrett as Larry Colby. reasons why I put up with working for the Dean Detective Agency. One is the monthly paycheck with my name on it, and the other is Hal Dean's private secretary. Her name is Patricia, but I call her Pat, the wish being father to the thought. That morning when Dean said he wanted to see me, I didn't mind waiting. It gave me all the more chance to watch the regular rhythm of the warp and woof of the sweater. Every time the warp widened, I went woof. Mr. Colby, do you mind? Not a bit, honey. I enjoy it. I meant you mind turning your eyes in some other direction. I can feel them. You're down to my veins now. Do me a favor and leave my liver alone, will you? Be flattered. If you weren't such a fabulous female, would I bother? You know, I've been thinking. If I had enough chocolates, I'll grow fat. I could have all my teeth taken out, and a plastic surgeon could break my nose and not bother to set it. It'd be horrible, but it might be worth it. At least I wouldn't have to worry about your X-ray vision. Well, take it easy, Pat. I know my left profile unnerves you. It does that to all the girls. Well, there's a sure cure. Don't tell me. I'll tell you. Go out on a date with you, huh? Why, Pat, you're a mind reader. And I don't like what I'm reading. Mr. Colby, the answer in two capital letters is no. You know, you shouldn't be caged in an office like this. You belong in a penthouse with mink carpet on the floor and diamond-studded paper on the wall. Why, Larry, you've learned a new line. What's the matter? Competition getting tough? For Larry Colby? The line forms to the right, honey. If you hurry, you can get the 249th place. Pardon me, Ronnie. In the other direction. Now, oh, come right out and admit it. Be honest with yourself. Confess that my profile drives you crazy. Crazy is right. Are you doing anything tonight? Yes. I'm putting some new diamonds in the wallpaper. Half a dozen fell out last night and they got so dirty. I have to throw them away. They got dirty? On the main carpet? They fell into a cup glass bowl of emeralds and bruised themselves. <laughs> Excuse me, won't you, but that's the boss. Yes, Mr. Dean? Is that Colby character out there? He is, and I wish he weren't. Then send him in to me. With pleasure, Mr. Dean. I don't think he'll make any passes at you. You're not his type. The door is right beside you, Mr. Colby. Don't cry, baby. I'll be back. Hi, Hal. I'm not. It's too early in the morning. Colby, you're not on a case right now. That's right. Well, you're going to be. I've got a new client, the Mermite Swimsuit Corporation. Heard of them? Can't say I have. Well, they're a pretty big business. You may not realize it, Colby, but 50% of the girls on beaches from Florida to Long Island will be wearing mermite swimsuits this summer. You mean the other 50% won't be wearing... Never them? mind the other 50%. It's the mermite swimsuits I'm interested in. Personally, I'm more interested in what's inside the swimsuits. You must be getting old, Bob. I'm 44, and you must be every day at 35. 32. And a young 32 at that. Just listen to me, will you? They're holding a contest to select Miss Mermite. Bully for that. The finals are going to be judged down in Florida in Cypress Gardens starting early next week. They want a representative from this agency to be on the panel of judges. Boss, you mean that you're going to send me to Florida to study young women in mermite swimsuits and I'll be getting paid for it? I mean exactly that. There are fairies at the bottom of my garden. Starlight, star bright, just call me Jiminy Cricket. It seems a simple sort of assignment that any fool can handle. That's why I'm giving it to you. Why, thanks, boss. I'll see if I can save a blonde for you. You leave first plane in the morning. You booked in at the palatial. A guy named Myers is running the contest from Mermite's End. He'll introduce you to the other judges. What's the angle, boss? Why a dean operative? They can't find it that tough to get judges. What skullduggery is skulking? I don't know. They won't say. They just want a private investigator as one of the judges, and he must not reveal his true identity. Hmm. There has to be a snag in this swimsuit setup. But don't worry, boss. If one of those swimsuit snags, I'll be there to see it. <laughs> I went home and packed. 
being my last night in New York, for a week at least, I said my farewells. Cocktails with Carol, dinner with Diane, supper with Sylvia, breakfast with Patina, and Kathy kissed me goodbye at the airport. I slept all the way down on the plane in spite of the red-headed hostess, who would insist on fastening my safety belt personally. Cypress Gardens was sensational, and so was the queue of cuties waiting to be judged. I had been introduced to my fellow judges, Elaine Curzon, who edited an exquisite, the fashion magazine. She was a brunette with dark eyes as soft as a glacier, and they looked at me as if she just rolled over an old stone, and there I was. The third judge was Claude Duval, a famous fashion photographer. He looked at me as if I was a mongrel who'd somehow found his way into the middle of the pedigree class. You understand the procedure, Mr. Colby. The girls parade past us, each wearing a number on her swimsuit. You make your own notes, and we compare them at the end to decide on the elimination. Thanks for the explanation, Miss Curzon. I'm surprised that someone as inexperienced as yourself should have been selected for this task, Colby. Well, Mr. Duval, I guess they figured they ought to have an amateur to balance up the professionals. You know what an amateur is? A guy who loves his work. Personally, I detest these contests. It weren't for the size of Mermite's advertising budget in my magazine. I couldn't agree more, Elaine. If it wasn't for their account with my studio... Well, I think it's just dandy. Then I think all dames are dandy. The fanfare of music over the public address system that had been set up round the pool announced the start of the contest. Then, to the accompaniment of soft music, the parade started. There were 30 girls, out of whom we had to select 10. I never concentrated so much in one morning while numbers 1 to 25 filed past, revealing some of the most exciting swimsuit filling I'd ever seen. Then I realized that was just sitting numbly while opportunity was knocking itself out of my door. But I decided 26 was my lucky number. 26 was a honey blonde who was wearing a bikini that had somehow shrunk. But fortunately, the 26 hadn't shrunk with it. Say, hold it, honey, uh, before you go. What's your name? Alicia. Alicia Hope. And what you've got, baby, you don't need hope. Mr. Colby, kindly remember you're a judge. Don't say I am. You doing anything tonight, Alicia? Not a thing. Colby, you can't do that. Don't you know the first rule of this kind of contest? The judges must have no personal interest in any of the contestants. I'm rewriting the rule right now. What time, Alicia? Where? Eight o'clock. I'm staying at the Sirocco. Sirocco? That's what they call that hot wind off the Sahara, isn't it? Well, baby, one look at you, and I'm all winded, to say nothing of hot. Can we get on, Mr. Colby? Oh, sure. By now I'm feeling no pain, Elaine. Numbers 27, 8, 9, and 30 wound by, and then it was time for the judges to wind up the first round. We'll start with number one, the blonde with the poodle cat. My vote is no. Mine too. What do you say, Mr. Colby? I say yes. Yes, you mean no. No, I mean yes. We'll leave the disagreements and come back to them later. Number two, I say yes. Agree. No. Number three, no. No. Yes. This is ridiculous. You obviously haven't the slightest idea what's required in these contests. I just know what I like. If we go on like this, we'll be here all day. I'm prepared to do a deal. Just what do you mean by that? Number 26, she's in. Definitely not. Don't be hasty, Elaine, my dear. Now, if we should agree to that, Colby, what then? Then whatever you say about the other 29 is okay with me. Blackmail. I'll write blackmail. But rather than argue all day, I suppose we'll have to agree. It was 5.30 by the time I got back to my hotel. Just enough time to shower, change, and eat before my date with Alicia Hope. But when I opened my door... I saw there was something in my room that was going to delay me. A guy built like an all-in wrestler and wearing the latest thing in Ivy League. Don't tell me. Let me guess. I'm in the wrong room. Impossible. You're in the wrong room. Doubtful. You want to see me? For sure. Now it's your turn. Mr. Colby, you've been sent down from New York as one of the judges in the Mermite Contest. Uh Uh-huh. The point is that the Mermite organization has been told a number of times now to cancel their contest. I'm here to ask you to tell them that we mean business. Why do you want the contest canceled? The reasons don't concern you. 
But I want you to appreciate the importance of this so that you can pass the message on. This message... <coughs> I'm sure that'll make certain that you won't forget to tell them. Goodbye, Mr. Colby. I lay where I was on the floor for a few minutes. Then I started moving things cautiously. Things like an arm or a leg to see what was broken. Five minutes later, I was on the phone ordering a double-double. Come in. Here, drink, Mr. Colby. Thanks. Oh, brother, you look like you took quite a covering. <laughs> you should have seen the other guy. Absolutely untouched. It was 8 o'clock when my bruised bones, covered by a tuxedo, came to a stop outside Alicia Hope's room at the Sirocco. Then I saw the door was already open. An obvious invitation. I accepted. Thoughtful of you to have the door open, Alicia. Alicia? It's me, Perfect Profile Colby. Alicia? Baby, that's no way to wear a mermite swimsuit twisted around your neck. How can you breathe? Oh, I get it. You can't. In case you don't know it, Alicia, you're dead. From a date with a doll to a seat in a cell in one easy lesson. That was the current career of Larry Colby. How come? Simple. I had just started to walk out of Alicia Hope's hotel room when I walked into a wall. The wall had two arms, two legs, and a police lieutenant's badge. One look from the lieutenant at me, another at the girl with a swimsuit round her throat. The next thing you know, hey presto, Colby in the calaboose. Mr. Colby? Wow. Lady, what paradise do you patronize? I'm moving my custom there as of now. I'm here to take you back to your hotel. You're free to go. I believe that a babe like you doesn't even need a magic wand to open prison doors. All she has to do is get close enough and the bars just melt. I've talked to the lieutenant. I've explained. Maybe you do the same for me. It's quite simple. I am Clarice Mermite, president of the Mermite Swimsuit Corporation. It was I who hired you to come down here. Wow. Lucky me. The moment I learned of the girl's murder, I flew down from New York. I'm grateful. After a night in this cell, I was just about to uh, disobey orders and tell that lunkhead of a lieutenant who I really am. I've done that for you. My car's outside. I think a conference between us is called for. Miss Mermite, you're the kind of miss with whom I prefer to confer. Drink this, Mr. Colby. It'll cheer you up. Thanks. And I'll stand side on so you can see my profile. That should cheer you up. Mm, you're quite a handsome man. And you know it. How can I help it? My mirror tells me so every morning. However, the purpose of this conference is not to discuss your attractions. Mr. Colby, you were hired to keep my contest out of trouble. Not for me to get you out of trouble. Miss Mermaid, I was hired blind. You can't blame me if you didn't tell the agency that there was somebody trying to stop this contest. How do you know that? A guy called on me and told me by means of a few bruises. Then Alicia Hope gets murdered. Don't you think it's about time you told me a few things? Very well, Mr. Colby. The most important thing is that I've only been president of Mermag for eight months since my father died. He left me the controlling interest in the corporation, but on certain conditions. Don't you wear your own swimsuits as advertising? You're the first president of a corporation I've ever met who could do it. Please. By the terms of my father's will, I am on trial for a year. If the profit of my first year's operations equals last year's profit, I inherit. And if not? Then the controlling interest goes to a former employee of my father's. A woman who was very close to him for some years. Ah, so that's why the contest. Publicity to sell the swimsuits, huh? Yes. It's been a bad year so far. And I'm relying on the Miss Mermite contest to remedy that. Say, this uh, ex-employee, uh, do you know where she is now? What she's doing? Of course. She's right here in Miami. 
And she's on the panel of judges. Elaine Curzon? Exactly. But why did you put her on the panel? It seems safer. It'd be hard for her to sabotage the contest if she's part of it. And she'd have to be careful in view of her present job as editress of Exquisite. So the visit from the guy who handed me a beating looks like a Curzon caper. And perhaps the murder, too. Because how do you think the lieutenant was on the scene just as you were in the room? Maybe he's clairvoyant. Maybe he got an anonymous phone call from a woman. He told you that? He did. I think I'd better have a talk to Miss Curzon. Ah, uh, but not until after the semifinals tonight. We mustn't alarm her. And you must keep a sharp watch for anything that looks like going wrong. <laughs> But the only thing that went wrong with the semifinals was that we had to eliminate six out of the ten contestants. If I'd had my way, I'd have hung the first prize ribbon around each of the ten sets of vital statistics. After all the speeches were over, I got close to Elaine Curzon. What do you want, Mr. Colby? Oh, it's this way, Elaine. I thought I'd uh, give you a break. After looking at all those girls, I figured you might get a kick out of a good-looking guy like me. A kick seemed a wonderful idea. But I'm afraid your hide's so thick I might sprain an ankle. You're not going to tell me my profile doesn't do things to you. It does, Mr. Colby. It fills me with an urgent desire to tap it with a ten-pound hammer. Well, don't be discouraged just because your strong arm boy didn't incapacitate me. And your little phone call to the cops didn't keep me in the cooler. What are you talking about? What are you going to do with all that mermaid stock when you get it? Sell it or run the business yourself? How did you find out about that? A little bird told me. You mean a little termite? Named Mermite. I should explain, Elaine. I'm employed by the Dean Detective Agency of New York. Well, that accounts for how little you know about beauty contests. I know someone's anxious to cancel this contest. Someone with a motive. And you've got the biggest, most beautiful motive I've ever seen. I suggest you look me in the face when you say that. And I also suggest you brush up on your detecting. I hardly need to take any drastic steps to collect the control of the corporation. Business has been bad this Last eight months. It can hardly pick up enough in the remaining four. All I have to do is nothing. Even with the publicity, this contest will give the outfit? Even with that. I'm afraid you're barking up the wrong tree, bloodhound. I put in a long-distance phone call to New York in the office of the Dean Detective Agency. Twenty minutes later, I was talking to my boss, who didn't sound pleased to hear from me. Colby, what do you want? Help. I read about the Dean getting murdered. What's the pitch, Larry? I don't know. That's why I'm calling you. Well, do you realize how much it costs to call from New York to Florida this time of day? Sure, so don't waste it. Boss, I need information. What about? The fashion magazine called Exquisite. I want to know the names of the principal stockholders and how much stock they hold. Also, if there's been any change in the management the last 18 months. And I've got to know this before tonight. The finals of the contest are tonight. Okay, stay around your hotel. I'll call you back. Fine. So long, Hal. Come in. Ah, uh, Mr. Colby, I've been looking for you. Ah, oh, Mr. Myers, come on in. Have a drink. At 10 in the morning. At two minutes past 10 in the morning. Uh, no, thank you. I just come to tell you about the arrangements for the finals tonight. Oh, sure, sure. It's going to be a wonderful night, Mr. Colby. We'll sunlight the pool at Cypress Gardens, and Miss Mermite has had a wonderful idea. Oh, when the parade starts, there will only be a single spotlight on the girl who is moving around the pool. Everything else will be in darkness. Sounds good. Oh, Miss Mermite has done a wonderful job organizing. She's handled nothing else for the last ten days or so. Only a week ago, she told me she didn't care how much it cost to stage the finals, but it had to be done right. I'll bet that long-distance conversation must have been expensive. Long-distance? Why, no, Mr. Colby. Miss Mermite was here when she told me that. I was under the impression she was in New York a week ago. An understandable mistake. Miss Mermite came down here incognito, rented a small villa so she could devote her whole time to the contest. Really? And how horrible that this, this murder should happen after so much preparation. The police are even going to be present at the finals tonight. Speaking of the murder, the dead girl, Alicia Hope, she was from New York. A model, so the police told me. You never knew her before the contest, by any chance? It's strange you should say that, Mr. Colby. I only thought of it this morning. 
I was going to tell the lieutenant tonight. Tell him what? It must have been three or four months ago. She came into the corporation's office in New York to pick up some new swimsuit she was going to model for a magazine. The magazine's name? You remember that? Oh, yes, yes. It was Miss Curzon, the magazine. Exquisite. Miss Curzon was with her. Well, thank you, Mr. Myers. That's very interesting. Uh, just do me one favor. Uh, don't tell that to the police till the finals are all over. Huh? I wasn't going to, Mr. Colby. Nothing must spoil the finals. Colby speaking. Larry, now this is Hal D. Boss, I've been sitting here chewing my fingernails. The contest gets going in half an hour. You got the stuff I wanted? Yeah, and listen hard because these calls cost a fortune. There was a major change in the ownership of Exquisite six months ago. The magazine was bought out by a private company. Three major stockholders. Names Charles Blair, Claude Duval, and Elaine Curzon. The story is the Curzon name didn't put up any money but cut 25% of the stock just the same. Did she really? Well, well, well. Well, that means something to you? It's just starting to. Bye, boss. I hung up with my thoughts going a million a minute. I was so preoccupied that I even walked out of my hotel room without giving my usual glance at the mirror to check whether my profile was still perfect. I walked down the stairs to the next floor and knocked at a certain door. Mr. Colby, you have the wrong room. I'm not one of the contestants. Uh, this is the right room, Elaine. We've got to have a talk. You're not welcome here, Mr. Colby. You might change your mind after you've heard what I've got to say. I think that's extremely unlikely. Just tell me one thing first. How much nerve have you got, Elaine? Not nearly as much as you have, Mr. Colby. However much you've got, you're going to need it all. That's if I can persuade you to do what I want. <laughs> The map of Florida Pool at Cypress Gardens was really a sight that night. Packed crowd, movie and TV cameras, key lights. The judges, Elaine Curzon, Duval and me, were seated at one end in front of the seats holding the VIPs. I had made sure I was between Duval and Elaine. I was feeling kind of tense. I could sense Elaine was, too. I hoped my hunch was right. The preliminaries were all over with at last. And after the fanfare came the announcement of the four finalists over the PA. Then the soft music started. And all the lights went out except the single spot on the first of the four girls as she walked slowly around the rim of the pool. But for once, I wasn't watching. I had my eyes glued to the darkness beside me. Suddenly, a shadow swooped down, and my hand dived out to grab another hand. <gasps> a hand that held a knife. Let go of me. Oh, no, Miss Mermite. Larry, you don't mean... Isn't it plain, Elaine? Miss Mermite meant murder. <laughs> I got Clarice Mermite over to the police without disturbing the proceedings too much. I had to twist her arm to do it, right behind her back. I told the police lieutenant the story. That took up so much time that I couldn't make it for the final judging. But I figured Duval and Elaine could take care of it. Later that evening, I had to repeat the story for Elaine. I've been thinking about it all the time, Larry. You were great, Elaine. It takes plenty of nerve to sit still, knowing there's going to be an attempt on your life with a knife. I thought you were crazy when you told me what you thought was going to happen. I don't blame you, but you see, she was smart. The best way of making sure she'd kept the controlling interest in Mermite was not to make a higher profit than last year. It was just to kill you. That was why she planned the single spotlight business. When I found out Alicia was one of your models for Exquisite, I knew you couldn't have killed her because you'd planted her in the contest. Yes. If she'd won, I was hoping to make capital out of it. The trouble was that your partner in the magazine, Duval, got worried. He was the one who sent his man around to beat me up and try and stop the contest because you'd only been let into the magazine in hope of your future prospects. He did that off his own bat, Larry. I didn't know about it. But if Clarice had all this planned, why hire you at all? As a patsy, she found out about my date with Alicia. The other girls would have known about it. She strangled her and then put the anonymous call into the cops so they'd be there at eight. But she was the one who got you out of trouble with the police. She had to. So I'd be set up again as a patsy for your murder tonight. Funny if that little manager of hers, Myers, hadn't dropped the fact that she lied to me about flying down from New York, I might never have got onto it. I'm grateful that you did. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Well, I like a girl to be grateful. I like a girl to prove it. How can I prove it, Larry? I just come and stand in front of a mirror with me and admit that you were wrong. Admit that my profile is perfect. <laughs> The 
Carter Brown Mystery Theater, based on the best-selling novels by Carter Brown, is written and directed by Maurice Travers for Grace Gibson Radio Productions.